The doctor finds a chemical plant is dumping dangerous toxic waste down a mine shaft, causing the deaths of miners who glow bright green. This story contains two things which became the bane of the John Pertwee era. The first is unit. By now they've become stale. Surely it would have been possible to have a John Pertwee story set on present day Earth where he's really up against it and doesn't have the military to fall back on. The other problem is that this story hits you over the head with a very heavy-handed moral message. In this case it's about pollution. Unfortunately it completely undermines itself, so to speak, because the victims, a Welsh mining community, are written as the most ridiculous, dim-witted stereotypes imaginable. If they wanted comedy Welshmen, why not just go the whole way? Just not used to five foot grass. <laughs> this story doesn't work as a conspiracy thriller because it's basically a simple tale of the people versus the evil corporation and its power mad computer. Like a lot of six parters, it feels slow and padded, and the romance with Joe and Professor Jones never feels real. By far the best thing in this story are the giant maggots. The models were made using fox skulls for the mouthpieces and so they're genuinely the stuff of horror movies. Unfortunately, any sense of terror is undermined by a scene in which the Doctor is supposed to be driving through maggot-infested hills, and it's the Doctor and Sergeant Benton sitting on a wobbly stationary prop whilst a CSO background scrolls past them. It doesn't help that there are two completely different types of film used here. Then there's the giant fly. The first time I saw it, I couldn't help but think of the fly in spitting image, in fact, it wouldn't have surprised me in the least if it had suddenly landed in a cow pat and then trampled the results into Arthur Scargill's sandwiches. 